Welcome to another episode of No Reserve, Haggerty's podcast about the enthusiast car market. We're here to help you make sense of the market, whether you're buying, selling, or simply watching. Now, this week, we've highlighted an incredible billion-dollar gift to a school that teaches automotive restoration. There's a Grand Wagoneer that sold for just 10 grand, a wildly complicated BMW 850, two fetching Fords, and a pair of Hondas from when that company was on fire. And I mean that in a good way. I'm Larry Webster, editor of Haggerty Media, and I'm joined by Dave Kinney, publisher of the Haggerty Price Guide. Between us, we've got decades of experience buying, selling, and driving the cars we love. Plus, we just don't guess at the values. We're backed by the data of the Haggerty Valuation Tools. Well, let's get right into it. Dave, we are recording this on Wednesday, July 26th. It's just been a huge week in the classic car community because of a really big active philanthropy. Can you explain to the audience what happened? Okay. Uh, good to hear from you, Larry. Hey, McPherson College in McPherson, Kansas, near and dear to my heart. I am on the advisory board. So, uh, you know, everything I say is colored by the fact that uh, I had a little tiny bit to do with this because I knew about it, not because I did any of the, uh, the philanthropy we're talking about here. One billion dollar gift to the college for their endowment. It was a matching deal. So they started out with being um, five hundred million dollars with the match. McPherson had to raise 250000 to get the match of 500000 They got it. The donor, who wants to remain anonymous, said, hey, great job, guys. You know what about that $500 million? I'm just going to turn it into a it's billion amazing. dollars. A yeah. billion dollars for a very small college in a small town in yeah. Kansas. And, of course, McPherson is the only college with a four-year automotive restoration well, program. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it, on every count. Yeah. Um, I loved this donor. I, I'd love to hug whoever it is because um, they're not asking for their name on a building. Nope. Just we want this program to continue. Um, can you maybe educate us a little bit? Because the big thing for us, our car people, is this, is this four-year degree in automotive restoration. We've covered a ton the school in Haggerty Media. We have McPherson graduates throughout the company. Kyle Smith, one of our writers, is a graduate. Why is it important that they're teaching restoration as a four-year degree in your mind? Well, it's a liberal arts school, so you don't just go and learn about restoration. You have to take other courses as well. So mm. that's important because some of the aspects of restoration, we all think that's hammers and dollies and it's, uh, you know, a body stitching, work, stitching right. body yeah. work, you know, yeah. all this sort of stuff, welding. You know what? You've got to know how to run a business if you're in the restoration business. So there's courses in and, you know, a, a fluency in how to run a business, how to treat customers, how to deliver what you're, uh, you know, what you're promising, all those sorts of things, which are a big, big part of it. So you go in there and I know so many people who go in and they say, I just want to work on cars. And guess what? They come out uh, being a PR person representing one of the auto firms or representing an yeah. auto related firms because they realize maybe. Maybe their talent was eclipsed by somebody else there who does better welding or does better interiors or but does better paintwork or something like that. But that's all that you learn in this incredibly cooperative atmosphere. I, I could talk about this for hours, yeah. but you know, you know, they get together after hours to work on each other's cars because that's what the community is about. And did I use the word community? Because that's what it is. Yeah. It is a college and it is a community. I am so excited excited about what's going on there. Oh. I can't even begin to, you know, it, it, it just, it just keeps on going. You go out there, you see these kids and they're kids mostly, they're mostly just out of high school. They want to do something and they discover that there's other people just like them. And, uh, you know, if you get a chance to get to McPherson to, uh, to, to take a look, um, you know, the college isn't some big, impressive Ivy league thing that, you know, where all the money's gone to buildings and stuff like that. It's a working college. And this, gives them the opportunity to be better at what they do. And I'm so excited about this. It's an 800 student college, so quite small. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, some of the things that I read about it, um, the liberal arts part is important because it teaches people a lot of soft skills that end up being needed throughout your life. And exactly. one of the things that, that I read as I was looking into this was, you know, those subtle communication skills. You know, can you write? 
I mean, can you write a clear couple of paragraphs? I mean, I know we're all going video conferencing, but that's going to be important. You know, Ooh, can yeah. you get up and 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 speak in front of people? And you know, all the other aspects you talked about running a business, but it's really um, combining those hard skills, the knowledge of how to stitch a seat, if that's where you want to go, but also with this sort of kind of classic things a college was supposed to do, which really, you know, make people better citizens, more well-rounded. So, Dave, I wish this program really started, um, I want to say about in the nine, two, late 2000s, it's, right? It's it's about, a, yeah, it's about a 20-year-old 20 20 program. 20-year-old. You know, and, and the best part of this story is, and it's absolutely true, um, this thing was flailing and the college was like, you know, we're not getting the amount of students and we're not getting the, you know, the it was kind a two year degree back then. Exactly. Yeah. Two year degree. And some guy named Jay Leno Jay. heard about it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, uh, you know, we could talk about Jay all day too, but we're not yeah, going to, but Jay said, listen, I want to know more about this. And Jay got behind the program and he said, you know, this is what we need going yeah. forward. And he promoted it. And all of a sudden, everybody got involved. And then another guy, uh, you might have heard of him, Wayne Carini, of course, works with us here at Haggerty all the time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Wayne Carini um, did the same thing. He came out and filmed an episode. Uh, Donald Osborne has been involved in it. So we've got all these celebrities involved. But Fantastic. then, you know, we also have the kids and they come in and they want to do right. And, uh, you know. It, it's just so wonderful as an old guy like me coming in and seeing these kids yeah. who are working and putting their heart into everything. And the other big news that came out of, uh, of McPherson, of course, is that they're taking a car to Pebble Beach for the first time. I they know. A, I can't wait to see it. A 300S Mercedes. I saw it when it was in 10,000 pieces. We were talking about it, you know, a long time ago. And I said, you know, you're in the middle of open heart surgery now. You got to, you know, you got to get this done. And Darn it. They had a 2023 deadline. They made the deadline. The car's going out there. It's going to be on the field of Pebble Beach. It's going to be the most exciting thing I've ever seen at Pebble Beach. How's that? Because for me, I know so many of the people who've worked on it. They've had to do this over like six, seven years of, uh, of turnover of students. Yeah. And so, you know, there's nobody who's working on it now who is, uh, you know, who was with it when it started. So there's literally dozens and dozens and dozens of skilled craftsmen who started out at just kids working on this car. Oh, it's fantastic. So I would, you know, anybody out there listening, go to Haggerty Media. We've covered, um, like as I, I mentioned, this college very often. A couple other things. Um, I have a weekly newsletter called Never Stop Driving that you can sign up for. Dave, I just wrote it this morning. And one of the things I really love about this uh, donation is that it, it it brings to mind a, a thing that Malcolm Gladwell did about 10 years ago where he highlighted this big $100 million gift to uh, a small school in New Jersey called Glass, Black, Glassboro State. Mm -hmm. And um, since then, the majority of gifts are going to like Ivy League schools, the Harvards, the Princetons. And Gladwell made this great, awesome point. He's like, they don't need the money. Mm. Harvard's got a $51 billion endowment, mm -hmm. but that's where all the donations are going. So this one, it bucks that trend. It's a pure act of philanthropy, right? Because there's no name Absolutely. involved. Absolutely. And it's going to help so many kids and it's going to help our hobby. I mean, I think we are both very clear how excited we are about this. Day, right? You know, and if, and if you're listening to us and you're getting all turned off and you're saying kids don't need college education and oh, da, da, no, da, da, da. Yeah. yeah. But here's another thing. Everybody always says, well, they're going to be saddled with debt when debt, when they get out, guess what? This school has a program. They pay off. If you enter in this program, if you make $10,000, they'll put 2,500 of it towards your uh, towards your uh, uh, tuition cost they have a program that the more you work the more you can get off of your uh, off of your tuition when you're a student at the school and some of these kids in the automotive restoration program they go out they get a job working in in the summertime and it's not a 15 dollar an hour job they're no, doing better cars, than that yeah so so they you know they might get a job in a restoration shop and and working with you know some of the pros learning even more skills and in the meantime for every dollar, 25 cents of that can go back to pay off their tuition. So, yeah. you know, I, they have the answers and they're out there and they're working on them and they're doing a great job. Now, I'm, glad could, you, I'm, I'm yeah. so glad you brought that up because as part of my newsletter, I looked into that. 
you know, and, you know, really figuring out what college costs. It's like it's like the sticker price in a car. There's the advertised mm-hmm. price and what everybody pays. But U.S. News and World Report uh, looked into this and said that McPherson is significantly uh, charges significantly less than the average four year college. Yep. Yep. So I, I I believe what you're saying. Um, and then the other thing I, I wrote about this a couple of weeks ago, we have a we are this is not new news, but this is going to become such an acute crisis. The shortage of craftspeople oh, yeah. and just regular mechanics. The Wall Street Journal reported that we need about two hundred and fifty thousand new mechanics and service technicians, whatever you want to call them a year. We only graduate like 40,000. Right. This is going to be, I mean, I'm, you've been watching this for probably a decade, this trend, but it, it's going to come to a head in the next five years, I would guess. So that's why Mc, Mc, McPherson is even better. I mean, that they're trying to help fix this problem. Yeah, no, it's, it, I mean, it's good news all around. And boy, you know, do we need good news right now? So yeah, here right, it is. It's, right, it's staring <laughs> at us. Here it is. Yeah. Hey, how about how about talking about cars? We could do that too. Okay, okay, okay. The first one, let's <laughs> we're gonna go to our opening bid section. But Dave, thanks for your service there, if I could say that. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm really Larry, excited for this. When I say it is a pleasure, I mean it is an yeah. absolute pleasure. I know. Pleasure to do it. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna move on to our opening bid. This is our section about past sales. You've highlighted one here, and <laughs> I, I got, I'm glad you did because I, I have a bit of a bone to pick you with you. It's a 1988 Jeep Grand Wagoneer that sold on Bring a Trailer for 10,000 bucks. Yep. Why didn't you call me about this before it sold? I would have bought this all day. 10 grand. I'll tell you why. Because wait a minute, Larry, here's the backstory. I bought one of these new. Okay. (laughs) I I bought an 89 Jeep Grand Wagoneer new, and I would say it is the worst car I ever bought new. Sure. Hands down. Yeah, four thousand miles. Had to put a new uh, a new motor in. It was a three sixty, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, AMC three sixty motor. The thing rattled. It creaked. Yeah, it oh, yeah. leaked. It did all that. Sure. But you know, you know, the the end story is, you know, when when you talk to somebody with this or a Range Rover, they say, yeah, I'm taking it back to the shop all the time. But it looks so darn good, and I feel yeah. so good driving it. And that's what it is. I love these things. This was cheap. Ten thousand one dollars is what it sold for on Bring a Trailer. I mean, come on, this was just insane insanely cheap you know we have our number four in the price guide which is kind of what this condition is here and i think it's uh let me look at my notes here 13.4 with a high of ninety five thousand dollars. so there's plenty of room in this one i should have called you sorry i apologize i don't know I how to get again. over it i mean i did it again this one has really high miles one hundred eighty five thousand miles yeah and they did replace the engine but <laughs> you know i have at a least, theory at least once right well, you know, the high miles on a car that's like a unibody, it's a welded structure. Mm-hmm. I kind of, I, I get really turned off when you're over 100,000 miles because in my experience, that structure tends to loosen up. Mm-hmm. It just gets work hard and I don't know what happens. You take a car like this, it's got a ladder frame with a body on top. Like you said, from birth, this is a creek and grown car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so it's not going to get any worse. Uh, but I, I remember looking at one of these. I test drove one. Uh, this would have been 20 years ago. They wanted 12000 It was a, a Chrysler engineer that owned it, so he kept it up. I came to the same conclusion. I drove it, and within the two miles, I was like, what a freaking piece of junk. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks so darn yeah, good, like, doesn't it? It's so cool, though. I know. And so for this ten thousand, like you said, I mean, there's, it, you're like bulletproof. You yeah. have your fun. You turn around and sell it. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it was you know, it, we made a mistake buying one with a moonroof in it. I mean, that was <laughs> the, you know, that was like a guaranteed leak source. Um, you know, it was what my wife wanted, and you know, and then that's fine. Best story ever. You know, we got like six <laughs> miles to the gallon in it. We replaced right. it with a we replaced it with a Ford uh, Explorer and we got oh, like yeah. twelve miles per gallon. It was like, wow, we doubled it. Then we got an escape and we got like twenty four miles per gallon. So oh, uh, now she has an escape hybrid, she's getting forty one miles a gallon. I guess all we can do now is go electric, which we're not quite ready to do. So that's you're, all right. You're doing your part. And you even got a, you, you've got that hybrid uh, pickup too, don't you? Oh yeah, I got a hybrid F one fifty. I'm doing my part you got it so um one last thing on this um this is one <laughs> of those cars that i i'm sure like the 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 finance people at, at chrysler or jeep just hated 
to discontinue because this the bones <laughs> of this thing came out what like the mid seventies. Oh yeah, no, maybe even the early seventies when you think right. about it. Okay, there, yeah, there was a Cherokee back then. Yeah, right. So they're making it for twenty years. So <laughs> by this year, nineteen eighty eight, this is already a twenty year old platform. So right. I think I'm just. It's the expectations part, right? We're all saying, yeah, they drive terribly, but it's a 50-year-old car. Of course it's going to. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, drive terribly, <laughs> uh, you know, put it up against my 86 Bentley, you know, the, the things the, the things like Acura, right? I mean, you know, it depends on what you're doing. So yeah. I, I, what, what you're would comparing you, it to. What would be your, like, the uh, just to pop to my head, the thing that would be most important to me, do the windows go up and down? Oh, yeah their power yeah and do they work like it's things like that that if i was going to shop for this thing i would be really concerned about what, what would you be looking at uh rust number one okay. uh and number two yeah you're right the power accessories i want to make okay. sure the ac and the heater work uh <laughs> and the ac you know i mean the good news is everything on this car is old school so yeah. it's not like you know there's no you know big tech items that you have to worry about and everybody was like you know all the electronics the electronics in this were designed by somebody who died in 1970 because of old age so i mean it's not like you know it's not like this this anything in this thing is cutting edge i will say that my wife did uh you know did some modifications on the side of the car and this is the first time i used uh you know uh, uh sharpies as uh, faux paint uh you know enhancers uh when when we had the car i had to fix a couple of the uh of the spots that had become silver uh, that should have been wood colored so i'm pretty good <laughs> at doing that as well so uh, anyhow well the deals are out there as we've discussed the Hagerty market rating continues to kind of soften not drop off a cliff, but right. soften. So there are cars like this out there. There's now a lot of really solid auction platforms, bring a trailer, cars and bids, the Haggerty marketplace, a lot of great stuff out there. And so there are still deals to be had. Uh, let's move on because the next one you have is uh, such a caricature cartoon. <laughs> this Benz. Um, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm, hope, yeah. I'm hoping everybody is taking a look at it. It's um, <laughs> a 1983 Mercedes-Benz 380 SEC uh, love child uh, that, uh, that basically got together with, uh, you know, in a nefarious affair with a Testarossa. Is that fair enough? That's and, a good way to put it. Yeah, and became a Koning special. So uh, Koning, uh, you know, not AMG, but a, a kind of a well-known, you know, custom customizer, builder, German. Uh, this thing was a Euro market car i kind of like it i don't know if i like it for fifty seven thousand. uh it was sold on the mb market uh which is another you know website that has uh you know mostly mercedes-benz but not all mercedes-benz cars and and equipment on there um but it was screaming at me that this thing was like uh you know uh, the 1980s again you know i'm I'm picking the Radwood winners here, aren't I? I mean, like once every couple yeah. of weeks, I come up with a Radwood winner. This car is so stupidly, crazily, you know, insanely presented. I love it. It's a four door that's kind of, you know, kind of trying to be a Testarossa. Is that fair enough? Well, yeah. I mean, if I could correct you, it's a two door car. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's sorry. the two door coupe version yeah. of the S Class. So this is uh, the, the, in the 80s, people still wanted these sort of Germanic coupe personal luxury cars for travel so it's a it's not a sporting car right and and this uh you know this german which you don't expect this out of germany frankly yeah slaps on this body kit with these outrageous wide flares at every corner and a spoiler and they put in really uh wide tires to match and i mean we saw these things on video games i mean Yep. It, it's the craziest car. It only has 200 horsepower. It's not like it's a rocket ship, <laughs> uh, uh, but it looks like, you know, this this period in time when this style was very um, popular. I mean, Dave, this is what I think. It's like every stockbroker in New York City in the 80s probably wanted something like this, this Mercedes. And then like the upper managers, the really rich guys, they went and got this body kit so they could one up somebody. That's probably the the best this thing did, right? You know, I think we should kind of even leave it at that because I think that is just an ideal description of what we're talking <laughs> about here. I, I, I really do. And, it, you know, Wolf of Wall Street, beware. Here's sure. your car, right? I there mean, it you is. Know, it's, uh, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. I'm sure there's the, uh, you know, the Hollywood equivalent, but I, I think you're right on here. Well, let's stay on the German uh, then because there's another car you've highlighted. 
and it's a 1994 BMW 850 CSI. This is very much another two-door German coupe, the kind of luxury uh, travel thing. This is one only has 21,000 miles, um, B12 stick shift, sold for a crazy dollar, 185 grand. Dave, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, big, yeah. big, 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 big money. But you big know money. what? Uh, uh, within our price guide range, believe it or not, because it is. We, yeah, we've got two sixty one at the top and fifty eight three at the bottom. That's a two hundred thousand dollars swing in those cars. Yeah. Now our number two, which this car probably would, uh, you know, would show up at, yeah, one is one one seventy four. So we're kind of in the range. One eighty four is where it sold at on Bring a Trailer. Um, so I'm not, I'm not calling out cause of stupid money. I just think that it's a really, really tough to beat, um, you know, long-term collector car buy. Uh, I know, I know, I know it's an 850, it's an eight series BMW. These cars were just pummeled and hated by everyone. No one ever thought there'd be one that ever sold over a hundred thousand electronics, 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 but here we are. All right. You can confirm or deny what I've heard about these things. Okay, go ahead. Right? I get it. V12, super cool. It's right. like having an electric turbine engine. But uh, each bank, so a V12 has two banks of six six cylinders. Right. Each bank has its own, basically, engine management system. Right. right? Its mm-hmm. own ECU, its own wiring harness, its own air ba- uh, air box, and all the associated stuff between it. And we know those computer chips, right? Not com- chips, those boards. The capacitors dry out, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The heat cycles and they get little cracks and things don't work. And there's no room in that engine bay. I just heard, I, I know there's somebody in town in Ann Arbor that owned one of these things. And he just told me nightmare after nightmare after nightmare. And that's why the values are so low. And now it's, suddenly everybody's forgotten how bad they were. Like, what do I miss when that happens? I don't know. You know, in the last couple of weeks, I, I took a trip across the country. Yeah. And uh, I wound up, and I'm not going to say where, but uh, a friend of mine who's a car dealer. And, uh, <laughs> Wait, and Dave, I, my head went like you were like in Vegas on some bender. Is that what yeah, it was? <laughs> yeah, if that's what you want to think. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Anyhow, I'm at a car dealer's place of business, and uh, he gets a phone call, and he picks it up and talks to the guy. And, uh, and the guy wants him to confirm that the car won't break down. And, uh, I'm listening <laughs> to one, one side of the conversation and, and I'll, I'll take the, uh, shall we just say more colorful language out of it. And he says, of course it's going to break down. It's a Jaguar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, now here's the way that you sell cars in, in 2023. You tell the truth, right? And I think if you had to have uh, somebody looking at an 850 CSI and they said, well, I'm going to drive it forever and I'm sure it's got that bulletproof German engineering. After you stop laughing, what you would say is, no, of course not. It's going to break down, uh, you know, because it's such a complicated car. Once again, I'm going to go back to our Grand Wagoneer, but it's so nice to look at, isn't it? Oh, the design. This is one of the best designed German cars ever made. Yeah. Without question. Yep. Uh, But, you know, speed wise, car and driver tested one of these. It's about a six second car, a zero to 60. Not knocking anybody's socks off. In fact, some of the stuff I read, they didn't really even like the stick shift because it made it kind of surgy. They yep. actually preferred the the automatic. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, you know, you live long enough, you see all this stuff, Larry. That's all I can say. You know, one of those McPherson grads <laughs> become a specialist in the 850 and, and they got a job for life. Cause these exactly. Are like- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're precisely right. You know, they'll have three customers with six cars total, and they're set, and they're set till they're ninety, right? I mean, you know, no, Mister Smith, don't sell the car, don't sell it. I know I can fix it. So. Right? I mean, oh my gosh! That's, that's... And and the, in the meantime, their job is to go to junkyards around the world and find all these ECUs and all that sort of everything stuff. you can. <laughs> exactly. I mean... Exactly. Oh my gosh. Hey, so can. we're going to go for the sublime to the really unridiculous. How about that? A Please. 2003 Mercury Marauder. Yeah. So we've gone from a car that's, you know, arguably unfixable uh, to a car <laughs> that, <laughs> that has absolutely everything going for it in the fixable department. It's a Mercury. I mean, it, you know, what, and what is a Mercury? It's a Ford. It's got a 302, uh, uh, you know, V8. Yeah. Uh, this car has good service history. It's, it was on cars and bids, and it sold for a quite reasonable for its condition, uh, $16,250. Uh, it's got 94,300 miles. 
a Doug DeMuro video, which I guess I'd take off $500 for, but that's just me. Just kidding, Doug. But anyhow, in the in the meantime, uh, you know, a lot of car for the money. Sixteen two fifty. I love it. And this is a fast Mercury. Uh, and plus, you have the advantage of sneaking up behind everybody on the interstate, and you know they're still thinking this is a cop car. So there you go. Oh my gosh! I mean, this platform was everybody's limo, every right. police cruiser, every taxi. Right. right. And uh, you know, the Marauder is that special one. It has that really cool center console with your shifter. Yep. It's all blacked out and you know, I agree with this. 60000 this is a great buy. I, yeah, I mean, this is a yeah. lot of fun for not a lot of money, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Uh, I think it was sold before on cars and bids as well. I don't have the number for what it's sold for. You know, this this car's probably going to get sold forever for sixteen two fifty or the equivalent of, you know, 10 years from now, whatever. Uh, but it's a fun car. Uh, you know, you could wrap it and make it into a taxi cab for the movie that's uh, coming out or something like that. But in the meantime, uh, this was not high tech 2003s, but this was grandma tech 2003 that was taken to the extreme. Yeah, I I think these are good investments, Dave, because they're such weird time machines. Yep. And, you know, ones like this that are that clean, you know, everybody put blowers on them. They changed all kinds of things. This one doesn't seem to have any of that done to it. It's just going to be continue to go up because. I mean, you, I'm sure you've probably seen the Freedom Factory, Cletus, right? He has yep. races of these things. So <laughs> there's like every minute we're losing another five Panther platform cars. <laughs> 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 so there's just not going to be many left. They're giving their life so that others may uh, <laughs> others may serve, right? I guess in the in the car world, but uh, yeah. And there's but, just uh, a big following too, you know. Sure. Um, uh, there's something about this car. I remember John Phillips, when I was at Car and Driver, he had Kenny Brown modify one of these things. And oh, I think nice. He, they did it for the magazine and then he bought it. He liked it so much. And um, there's so there's something about this idea where you have, you know, you can almost hear the Blues Brothers soundtrack playing in your head when you drive one, right? That's what I would kind of picture. No, I, I like it. And, you know, the Marauder was special from new. So let's not, you know, let's not just say this was some package that kind of snuck out and nobody cared about it. A lot of people who were really into cars were buying these. Um, you know, they knew it was kind of near the end of the platform, which had been around since what, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, what, 1884 or something us. like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, whatever, exactly. And uh, and so, you know, it was already, you know, old school tech uh, yeah. when the car came out. And there's nothing wrong with old school tech. I mean, you yeah. know, it's, uh, uh, you know, this car will be, you know, after, uh, you know, it's it'll be the cockroaches and the Mercury Marauder, the two things <laughs> left after it's the, 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 after the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, exactly. Well, let's move on. I want to move on to our kicking tires segment. This is where we talk about cars that have not sold that are presently uh, for sale. And the first one, Dave, I'm going to highlight is we're about three or four weeks from the Monterey auctions, which are arguably the biggest auctions of the year for classic oh, cars yeah. in the U.S., right? You've been going yeah. there. I mean, before I was born, I would Yeah, imagine, pretty right? much. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And you go for like 10 days. You really know this. But what it does if you're a car fan, is really fun, is it brings out the most unique, rare, stunning machines. And the Broad Arrow crew is selling something I hadn't seen before, so I had to dig in because it was just so gorgeous. It's a 1991 Isdera Imperator 108i. I'd never heard of it. Did you know about this thing? You know, I remember seeing it in car magazines back in the day. Oh, and that okay. is my my only, you know, uh, relationship to it is just uh, seeing it. You know, this was another impossible car. We couldn't buy it in the United States. Yeah, so it right, has to be 25 years old before it's brought in. And, of course, that, you know, makes it because it's a 1991. So no problems there. Um, this is a U.K. delivery car with a left-hand drive, which is kind of cool. Totally um, cool. It, it does have uh, a five-liter uh, Mercedes-Benz V8, the M19 engine, uh, and it's a really stunningly good-looking car. It's got that kind of, you know, I'm not going to call it a wedge because it's an advanced wedge. It's a well-done wedge, basically. Don't you agree? I totally agree. And I know we're in a, a medium well, that's not visual, but go to the Broad Arrow, broadarrowauctions.com to take a look at this thing because it is, it's like a more refined version of the um, Countach. And it looks like something that would have come out of the Bertone design yeah. house. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Road and Track tested one. It was actually quick, 
Five seconds, zero to 60, 175 mile an hour top speed. It's got a manual transmission with this five speed V8. They only made 30 of them. Like, I'm so like, God, I wish I could drive this thing. Was it a real car, you know, or was it just, you know, like one of those show things that's cobbled together, generates some numbers, but you'd never want to really drive it? Well, I mean, it's got 2,200 miles on it, which isn't a lot, but it's a lot if it wasn't a real car. So I'm going to call it a real car. Mm. Um, you know, these cars were built from 84 to 93, which is a pretty long, you know, nine year range uh, mm. that, you know, that they were made. Uh, you know, another dream that, you know, might have come to fruition that didn't come to fru fruition. One of the problems is you know, pronouncing the damn name. I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> I mean, well, I'm sure, I'm sure you worked on that before we got on, right? I so. did. I, and I know, I'm not sure I got it right, but you know, it's, that's a great point. Was this just too early? Because now we're flooded with these sort of boutique cars from the Pagani to the Koenigsegg. Koenigseggs. Yeah, exactly. To exactly. now we have the Gordon Murray. I mean, yeah. and you know, this seems like a precursor to that, but in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, I don't know, is the economy not ready for something like this or it's a good question? Well, I mean, you know, they, they were frozen out of the U.S. market, which, uh, you know, is one thing to, to be aware of because you couldn't bring a car in and or make a car that was going to be uh, U.S. legal without doing an awful lot of extra steps. Hmm. And so uh, and, you know, frankly, you know, not to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, too jingoistic, jingoistic about it. But, you know, this is where people buy the cars. Uh, so being frozen out of one of the major markets, uh, you know, doesn't bode well for the future of a small company like that. Oh, that's a good point. So now there's this, this, the big difference is this thing called show and display. Show and display. Exactly. And exactly. so a lot of these cars that we just mentioned, they actually do not conform to United States requirements for uh, vehicle safety and also emissions. But the way that they get them in is under this show and display, which I am hearing, I don't know if you are uh, everybody's worried it's being abused and that mm -hmm. loophole will be closed. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Uh, you know, I'm going to be uh, speaking to a representative of my congressman here in a couple hours and I could bring that up as well. You want me to do that? You are big papa. I mean, you, you, you've got all the connections. <laughs> well, they, this is my secret project that maybe uh, maybe will some, come to some fruition. I'm helping out my fellow car guys. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll maybe we'll bring that up. Let's talk about the show and display. We don't want to have that loophole go away because people are abusing it. And you know that's always what happens. You know, there's always it's a, it's for a great idea, and then some bunch of clowns come in and start bringing stuff in they shouldn't be bringing in. It's the same old thing. They make problems for all the rest of us. But. Yeah, I mean, you know, one could get in an accident, and then yeah. it's found out. Well, wait a minute, that car was driven ten thousand yep. miles last year. It's supposed yep. to be here just so it could be displayed. What are you talking? Yeah. What What are you driving it? Yeah, I can see the uh, I can see the headline news now on the eleven o'clock news around. The on country, the so. flip side, though, Dave, if you yes. think about the impact that this tiny number of cars has on whatever goal these laws are trying to hit, it's infinitesimally small. So they kind of yeah. don't matter. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get yeah. it. Okay. So oh wow, well, look at you being reasonable today. Good for you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I took my reasonable pills just before we went on here. So, uh, yeah. Hey, All right, I, let's move on. What if you there are some cars that are for sale that you're you're really interested in. Tell us tell us about one. You know, one of them that I'm very excited about is a 2005 Ford GT that's on Haggerty Marketplace. This is coming out of the uh uh, help me out here. The museum in Colorado. That, no, the uh, Hendrix collection. Hendrix collection. That is exactly right. Um this has all four options. Uh, which are the BBS uh, BBS wheels, the uh, the stripes on the outside, the Macintosh stereo, and the painted calipers. Mm. Uh, but it also has something very, very unusual. It has 8,238 miles. Yeah, amazing. So we actually have a Ford GT that has been driven. And not only that. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. 8,000 miles in 20 years that's not driven come on oh for a ford gt it is you really? go out there oh you, know, you look at them at the auction they still have them with 12 miles and 28 oh, miles gosh. and 380 miles 
And this one was in an accident in 2015, prominently displayed there on the website. Oh. So here is your next track car. This is me Larry, all day long. I, li I like the ones with the warts. This is you. So uh, it's got all the four options, which is great. It's red, which, you know, and not my favorite color in these. I, I like black with the black ghost stripes, to be real honest. If somebody wants to give me one of those, I'd be happy to take it. But, um, you know, these cars go on the price guide from 291K to 500K. This ain't going to reach 500K most likely. So this one is, uh, you know, as we say, uh, loose and free. It's ready for uh, it's ready for somebody to buy on uh, on Haggerty Marketplace. God, so they should I, go check it out. You know they were they they sold new for like one hundred and ten grand. Uh, weren't they like one hundred and fifty? I think mm, not. Not you the know, first whatever. year. Yeah, I have okay. a, I have so much experience with these cars because this is when I was a car and driver. You ordered and, one, didn't you? No, no, that was the later one. The, oh, okay, the okay, one, okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I, I was so lucky is I got shipped out to Gingerman Raceway, which is about two and a half hours directly west of Dearborn, Michigan, where this car was was designed. Right. And I met the engineers from Ford and they said, OK, this is the first time any journalist is going to get to ring this thing out. Wow. And I tested it. I got zero to 60 numbers and it was astonishing. Right. 3.3 seconds to 60. I was a snob back then, Dave. I mean, maybe I'm snobby now, but I remember thinking, yep, it does all the numbers. It it drives really great. It just felt like it had a numbness to it. Like there just wasn't a lot of character. You didn't really? get any communication through the steering wheel. The seats were this stiff thing. And it just wasn't a charismatic car like a 355 or 360 or some of the other machines that they were made. But you could not argue with its performance. Fast forward 20 years, I, I've really, God, I did a lot of dumb things when I was young, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to even start talking about the dumb things I did and continue to do. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I understand. But, uh, you know, I mean, here's your chance now. I mean, well, uh, you know. I did, what I wanted to say was it wasn't obvious then standing with those. I mean, they all look tired. They've been working on this thing night and day for three years, these engineers, but they really took their responsibility to, uh, you know, to really follow up the original GT40 that did so much for Ford. And they, they, they engineered this car, right. Subsequently, I saw a lot of like twin turbo ones and I knew these, these guys were building the motors and I'd say like, okay, what well, do you change the pistons, change the crankshaft? And they're like, no, 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 you don't get it. This engine's insane. It's a race motor from the factory. We don't exactly. do anything. We just up yeah. the boost. Yep, exactly. And, you know, the same with the structure, all that stuff. So I think the prices that these get reflect that they made a lot of them, which is somewhere around 4000 right? I think that's right. Over two years of production, yeah. Right. Uh, so uh, maybe you want to split this with me? Yeah, you know, not this time. Not this time. Really? Yeah. Well, you don't buy cars with, like, bad Carfax, do you? You know, I have avoided it so far, but I'm not going to say never say never. Right. Because uh, that's another art. You know, that's another thing we can talk about forever. You know, a 15 year old accident on a 20 year old car. What does that mean? It's a heck of a lot different <laughs> than a, uh, you know, an accident on a car that's, uh, uh, you know, three months old or, or a year old or something like that. Uh, so, yeah, I might be buying a car with a bad car effects in the future. So who knows? But, you know, define bad, right? I mean, there's, you know, there's underwater for three weeks and then there's, uh, you know, a hit in the parking <laughs> lot. That's, you know, and I think we we conflate that. You know, we say it's got a bad car effects because somebody ripped the bumper off of a Toyota Corolla. Do we really care when it's 10 years old? I think not. But, you know, hey, another yeah, subject. For I, another I search out stuff like that because I feel like oh, sure. I'm going to get I'm going to get a a, a, a pay less for the experience I want. That's what I tell everybody who's got a kid going off to college. I said, look at, you know, go to, you know, <laughs> go to the website, look for, look for ones that have a bad Carfax on them. Because if the, if the fender was ripped off of it in four years or five years of your kid being at college, uh, you know, that's probably going to be the least of your worries on this thing. Somebody's going to, you know, punch the door in or something. So the one thing that we didn't mention is a big advantage of this car, I think, is that there's a really active club. Oh, yeah. And people really drive these things. And there yeah. are rallies everywhere. I mean, you get one of these, you can have a ton of fun with it from day one. And they are, make no mistake, crazy fast. The air conditioning works. Yep. 
You're gonna, yeah, they got a lot going for them, and yeah. I like them with miles on them because you can use them and use them again and use them again, and you don't have to worry about it. You know, it's the it's the you know I you know I don't practice what I preach all the time. Sometimes I try and keep the miles <laughs> low on my own cars and everything else, but you know the fun factor is there when you can drive the darn thing. So there you uh, are. Uh, and speaking of Fords, we got we got something in another price range here. Wait, Dave, yeah. I need you. I need <laughs> you to help. I need your help. Yes, sir. You got to help me flip some cars so I could layer up to afford a Ford GT. Okay. Well, why don't you All buy right. this next one then? Okay. Okay. Good. What are you thinking? A 2006. So one year difference. It's a Ford. It's a Mustang, but it's really a Shelby GTH coupe with 9,600 miles and one owner. This why is you your like car. This thing? Okay. So I'm going to go back. You know, I'm the publisher of the Hegarty Price Guide, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. I started it off as something called Cars That Matter in 2005. I was in Vegas and mm-hmm. we were working on it. We had, uh, you know, like a, a four day work weekend where we worked on it in and, Vegas? I rented, uh-huh. and I rented one of these things. Oh, so I have a connection from Hertz renting one at the Las Vegas airport, having to sign my life away. And this could have been the car because it was a coupe, a GTH coupe in 2006. So, uh, yeah, this could very well be, you know, have my own personal history on it, uh, you know, taking it to wild places. Big Papa in driven? Is there a, a sticker? Big, it, it's possible that it is. <laughs> I somewhere have photos of the serial number of the car. So, oh, uh, wow. you know, that I drove. So, you know, it could very well be. It's a big Papa, you know, history car because it was a Shelby <laughs> and it's GTH. It's a Hertz car. That's what's the exciting part for me. Uh, this one's got 9,600 miles. It's on cars and bids. And right now, it's at a ridiculously low ten thousand dollars, so there's plenty of room to go. We have these in the price guide from twenty five nine to fifty six five. There was a time in about two thousand eight when you could buy these things for ten and twelve and fourteen grand. Those days are gone forever. You'd buy the good ones, uh, the really great ones for eighteen or nineteen. Those days are gone forever. If you can pick this thing up in the twenties, oh my goodness. It, you right. know, you can right. parlay that. Can I take that? the other side of this argument for a second, yeah, Dave? Sure, go ahead. Go ahead. I, this is where I think you're wrong. Oh, it's going to hurt. This is yeah, going to hurt. I know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, this is trading on the nostalgia of a really cool product uh, program from the 60s, right? And what the hell is wrong with that, Webster? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> you're right. I love nostalgia. I'm nostalgic like everybody else. But, you know, these cars that we're thinking from the, the, Early 2000s are going to be primarily the value will be driven by my generation and younger, right? Gen X. Okay. See where I'm going here? Oh, I'm about to talk myself into a wall. But- yeah, because we have all the money. <laughs> Remember, we're the boomers. We screwed everybody. We kept the money, okay? <laughs> Okay, fair, fair. No, fair. no argument there. Bro. But you're not going to be here forever, Dave. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't say that. So does a boomer, uh, yeah, okay, so you're suggesting a, a boomer wants this because they can't afford a, a 60 Shelby GTH, but they could get one from 20, oh, 2006. Well, how about this? And uh, forget the affordable side. How about the fact that this thing starts, runs, and drives and has air conditioning that would keep me cold in you know 115 degree Las Vegas summer weather? Yeah, the, the, the flip it side has is- that. Once they went from Fox Body to SN95, you had almost two decades of horrendous Mustang styling. That really ended when they finally kind of got it right with the Boss 302 in 2012. But So this is right in that era when these cars, I don't know, they're just not very attractive. Ooh. I'm sorry, Dave. Did I just offend you? Yeah. You know, I'm a big kid. I can get over it. But, you know, we're how about if we leave this one that we agree to disagree? OK. So, uh, you know, uh, but I see a lot of value in this thing. I mean, like I said, if you can buy it in the 20s, it's, it, you know, and, and your term boomer chow, that would be <laughs> the stuff that us boomers eat up. Uh, this is boomer chow. It's to classic this, boomer chow. Yeah. OK. Yeah. This is boomer chow to this boomer. <laughs> How's that? OK. I get yeah. it. Yeah. OK. All right. All right, move on. The next one that you've highlighted, this, this is I, like, I really want to know how this happens. This is a 1991 Acura NSX with a five-speed manual, the original factory colors, the black roof and the red paint. It only has 711 miles. Like, I know. I what? know. I know. Uh, this one's on Bring a Trailer. The seller is Scott Ailes, uh, who, you know, uh, will be happy to tell you he sells a lot of cars and a lot of nice cars on um, on Bring a Trailer. Uh, I do know him. Pretty nice guy. All good. 
Um, it's currently at $130,000, Larry. And guess what? Guess what the Hegarty price guide says? Because this is going to be a price guide buster. Yeah. Uh, we yes. have from 41 k for the all used up one to 143 This is $13,000 away from our top value. Yeah. And it's got, what, like six days to go? Uh, I think there's a pretty good chance it's going to bust through the $143,000 <laughs> mark. What do you think? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I just want to know how a car only has 700 miles on it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of you, course. Yep. Yeah. And there's the and there's the thing about that. I mean, you know, the belts, the hoses, all that sort of stuff. You got to watch out. I mean, it's perfect. You can see like the assembly lube on the suspension bolts. <laughs> yep. I know. I mean, I know. it is. This is the definition of a wrapper car. W-R-A-P-P-E-R. -P -P -E right. Like, it just came in the wrapper. You know, oh, I thought you were going to say get down with your bad self, but I guess not. So. <laughs> Here comes Big Papa again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Dave, this is when I, I can brag to you. Like, you know, you've made a really good living uh, buying and selling cars. And, you know, the reality is I know you like to think you're good at it, but it ain't that hard, Dave. It really isn't. I mean, I bought an NSX for 30000 and then immediately sold it six months later for 60. And, and I'm sure you reported it to the IRS, correct? Well, well. Hello, Larry? Larry? <laughs> Larry, you there? I, I, I split it. It was like a group of us bought it. And, yeah, okay. you know, but um, it was really funny because I, I bought it and it only had 30,000 miles on it. Right. And I started driving it. And I remember thinking, like, every time I drive this. Right. Another five thousand dollars comes off because I'm getting mm -hmm. fucking chips on it and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And um the other thing was this was this year uh has the manual steering. This is the purest uh example of the sort of the let's say the the the, hmm, the mission of this car. This was Yeah, the the designer's idea. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Ayrton Senna, right? Yeah. The Formula One driver, one of the best right. drivers ever lived. He was very involved in the tuning of this car. Yep. All that stuff, which is you know, the steering feels fantastic. The shifting's beautiful. This thing is so um, an iconic car, and I hate yeah. to use that word, but this yeah. thing is because, you know, without this car, we wouldn't have the 458 Italia, one of the best Ferrari sports cars ever made, right? You probably what wouldn't a, have Yeah, it. what a great way of looking at it, because I have always thought of these as 308 beaters. Yeah, I mean, right. You know, is cars that what they that were? beat the three, 308, and they did. Right. And this was the car that uh, Montezemolo, he was running Ferrari at the time. He sees this thing and he goes, holy smokes, the 308, or it was a 328 at that time. Yeah, it's right. junk. Yeah. And that got us to the 355. Has its own problems, but an extraordinary automobile. So this NSX is influential. First aluminum unibody mm -hmm. car. Right. By the way, I was with Brock Yates when he, he backed one into a ditch in Ohio. And <laughs> <laughs> Brock Yates, obviously, he wrote the Cannonball Run, brilliant writer for Car and Driver. Yeah. And they went to get it fixed, 22 grand to fix it. This was in, you know, the early 90s. But I sold the car and then I kind of missed it. And I was talking with our pal Camisa. I was like, man, I should really get another one of those. And he said something really interesting. He's like, why? He's like, I said, well, they're cool cars. He's like, no, they're not. They're boring. And I remember like thinking, this thing is not knocking my socks off. The things we loved about it in 1991, the fact that it had taken a Honda Civic and married that with a supercar were extraordinary. But now that we have all these really fast, charismatic cars that also have good air conditioning, suddenly in the rear view, these are a little bland today. Okay. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting way of thinking of it. But, uh, you know, I guess everything that we do is a timepiece, right? I mean, okay. all these all yeah. these cars, you know, we're winding back the watch to the, the day of. Mm. And uh, I think that the mission mm. of the Acura NSX was executed so perfectly. Oh gosh, totally. It's like, OK, we're the little Honda company. We're sitting over here and we're doing this, you know, whatever. And by the way, you know, you make your, you know, your Ferraris and you make your Maseratis and you make your expensive muscle cars we're going to show you what we do and i think that mm. that's part of it maybe you know maybe yeah. you're right maybe the time is left for that 
but they are fun to own and fun to drive. Um, you know, maybe one of the things we don't like about it is the damn thing doesn't break, right? I mean, we love the fact, point. you know, my dad, when I was a kid, I, you know, when my first job, I, I told my dad, and this was a long, long time ago, I said, dad, these people, you know, they spent $1,500 on a, uh, you know, a tune-up on their Ferrari. Now, this was in the 1970s. Wow. And my dad turned to me, he said, well, not only do they do that because they can afford to, but they like telling other people that that's what they spend on their car. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, important lesson, Dad. I think yeah. I will remember that one. And there's a lot right. of that. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I mean, to, to own it as this piece of incredible engineering, you know, I'm looking at some of the photos, just the interior. You know, they have this really short e-brake handle. Mm -hmm. and they, But they figured out how to get the belt cranks, so how you get leverage. I mean, it just pulls up with this silky smoothness that you just know that one little touch point tells you, wow, every centimeter of this car was obsessed over. And Shall we call Honda and tell them that they made a car that was too good and that's why we don't like it? I mean, you, know, you don't like it? Yeah. I mean, mm. I'm starting mm. to feel bad about myself because this suggests what I said before that I'm really jaded and spoiled. Well, Larry, is it just yourself uh, or is it others? I, wait a minute. I'm going to start getting into the $325 an hour. Get off the couch. Let's do something else, okay? <laughs> okay, one last thing. You know, th this was one of the early VTEX where it had two cam profiles. And when it switches to the, the high RPM cam profile, these things make this awesome deep-throated, like it almost sounds like a bass boat, right? I mean, you've heard them. <laughs> it revs up there. It's super cool. I love right, that I want bass another boat. one. Okay. All right. How about a Honda? We're going to go from uh, Acura, which is, of course, a Honda in other markets. Uh, we won't go there. Uh, I'm going to Meekum Sale on Friday. Uh, that's oh. coming up in Harrisburg. Uh, I guess uh, by the time most people listen to this, it already have happened. It's in the, you know, the farm hall in Harrisburg, which, you know, at 110 degrees up there, it's a lot of fun to be in there because, you know, you can <laughs> you can eat anything you want. Uh, you, know, you can have those funnel cakes and all that sort of stuff, and you're still going to lose weight because you're going to sweat it <laughs> off. Anyhow, a Honda S2000 convertible, and I kind of like this one. Um, it's, a, you know, it's a S2000, nothing wrong with that. It's a 9,600-mile car with a six-speed. Uh, we have them in the price guide from a low of 17 to a high of 55. Uh, this car in Silverstone Metallic's a good-looking car. I'm going to check it out while I'm up there, but I will not be bidding on it, so I'll leave that to somebody else. Well, Dave, tell us about these sort of, um, uh, as a random auction, the right way to say it, right? You know, you're going to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, right in the middle. It's yeah. the capital of the state. Right. You know, and they've got some really fascinating cars. They've got a um, this S2000. I know I'm getting yeah. off topic, but they have a Back to the Future Toyota pickup. Oh, cool yeah, too. yeah. Yeah, well, they so, also have a uh, they have a DeLorean to match it. They have a Back to the Future. Oh, DeLorean I didn't there. see that. So, oh yeah, wh yeah. Wh what do they do with these things? Tell me, like these these things, just an auction company decides to have it and they drum up. Tell me, I mean, I feel dumb, but I don't know. Hey, well, no, not at all. This is, uh, you know, this is old school auction company. No auction catalog. It's all online. You know, mm -hmm. so there's no printed catalog with a great description. It's all online. It is a meet and greet place. The place will be a human car wash of people oh, on really? Saturday. Yeah. Oh, they're going to have taken a wild guess. 50,000 people through the gates, <gasps> Wow! Uh, you know, on uh, Friday and Saturday, something like that, the two big days, uh, maybe more, maybe I'm off and, you know, you can buy the tickets in advance. They're 20 bucks, but when you get to the door, they're 30 bucks, you know, do the math on that. So they're holding a sale, but a lot of people are going there because they call it a car show because they get to see all these cars yeah. that they might not get to see, especially even at a cars and coffee, there's going to be things that, you know, are going to be there that wouldn't typically be at your cars and coffee. It's a meet and greet uh you know you go up there with your buddies that's what i'm doing on you Friday. call it a meet and greet because it, because you're going up with your friends oh. you know you're going to go out and uh, you'll know, meet and then uh, you know maybe have lunch and then disperse or maybe stay the afternoon and get together and have dinner go over to somebody's house if somebody's local or something like that yeah uh, so it's a it's an event a lot like a county fair and this is held at the fairgrounds in um you know in harrisburg they, they're you know they're state fairgrounds uh, and so there's a lot of indoor uh space and some outdoor space uh it's a lot of old-fashioned fun sounds there's fun 
vendors there, you know, all that. You're going to walk your feet off. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have, uh, you know, golf carts to get you back and forth between the faraway areas and stuff like that. Um, I've gone, I guess maybe it's been going on. I'm going to take a wild guess, seven, eight years, something like that. I think oh, I've wow. gone, I've gone six of the seven, eight years. Like I need to go to another auction, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see some random folks there that I only see once a year, uh, probably look through the literature guy and find some uh, stuff on weird Japanese cars from the sixties. Cause he always seems to find this stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll have been and gone. So I've gotten the good stuff. So you don't even have to check. I mean, this out. sounds like a real happening and yep. I would love to go, but I'd be afraid to go. The last time I went to something like this, it was in Auburn, Indiana. And yeah, I bought a 72 Z28 Camaro that I couldn't afford it, and I financed it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Well, they, they want you back. They definitely they, they want they you back. They want me back. They want you back. Yeah, I'm the exactly. idiot with a, with a burning fire in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah, bring bring your pay stub so you can, <laughs> you know, you can buy it and drive home. Uh, buy here, buy here, pay here, right? Oh, so. You made it really, I mean, this it does sound a lot of fun. It really does. No, it, I mean, it, that's what I'm going. I mean, it, yeah. it's, you know, it's the camaraderie. It's going there for fun. Meekum does a great job with these sales. Uh, you know, they, they, yeah. they do. They, you know, they put them on for a long, long time. And you're right. They just pop up all over the country. Uh, so they're fun to go to. I've never bought a car from Meekum. I've come close a couple of times, but never have. But I've had a lot of fun there. Um, so, you know, what the heck? But then again, I'm an auction junkie. I mean, you know, when I'm driving by, if I have time, if there's a farm sale going on, I'm getting out and taking a look at the John Deere and the you know the implements which i will never own i have five acres of property and i don't even mow my own lawn anymore so you know i do it for the fun well uh, i mean i encourage anybody to go to the meekum website and look at the lots i mean there is a, quite a cross section of car crazy heavy heavy stuff there yeah, crazy stuff you know american hot rod and stuff yep. but there's still a lot of like really oddball like i talked about that pickup there's some marcos race car and then this S two thousand. There's actually two S two thousand. So right. why did you? What, what, what's what are you? What are you interested in about this one? Oh, I think I went for the low miles, the ninety six forty miles. I think that's great. Uh, you know, I have a friend who raced these things. I'm having lunch with him tomorrow, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh, you know, uh, Peter Cunningham uh, also oh, raced them. Somebody I else raced the, one of them. Yeah, yeah. You raced one too. Yeah. How'd mm -hmm. you do? I can't remember. It was twenty five hours of Thunder Hill. I was with the Honda of America race team. They oh, had because cool. they, they made the special version. It was the club racer version. Okay. Yeah. That we raced. And it was a nice car to drive. Well, you know, I think these these cars really uh, you know, brought back a lot of track time to a lot of people. And I think that's the other exciting thing about them. So there was a you know, the S two thousand was out there and uh, you know, was was being pressed to the wall all the time. And I like that about these cars. And that's can, kind of my I, connection. Can I tell you a little story about this thing? Sure. So this version, the one you, you highlighted, is the two point two liter version of the motor. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you probably remember, maybe you don't like a little gearhead like me was reading all the spy reports about the S2000. And we knew it was coming with an engine, a four cylinder engine that had 240 horsepower, mm -hmm. no turbo, no supercharger, but it was only two liters. And we were losing our mind. One hundred and twenty horsepower per liter, which is one of those metrics that really defines uh, how efficient an engine is. And and. Only Honda, which is one of the best powertrain companies in the world, could produce something so audacious. Right. Are you with me? Yep. Okay. So we're reading all this. We know about it. Like, you know, about lose my mind. Somehow I get picked to go on the launch, the press launch. Mm -hmm. Honda's going to show this car to the world, to the to the press. It's in Nice. Uh that's in France or somewhere? Somewhere. Yeah, it's in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't pronounce it nice. It's spelled the same, but yeah, you're right. Okay. So whatever old I am, naive, I'm a hayseed over in Europe, never been there. Like you can imagine, you know, the country mouse in the big city. They've got the car out on this pavilion overlooking the Mediterranean. The most beautiful thing. It's Japanese engineers everywhere. Now that for me was so exciting because I get to talk to these people who engineered this car and knew all about it. And I'm talking to one of them. It's very hard because they, they didn't speak English and we were doing it through a translator. And a grizzled American journalist comes up to the Japanese engineer. He looks at the car. He, he taps the guy in the shoulder. He's, okay, so yeah, what's this thing got in it? What's, has it got a V6? <laughs> and <laughs> the blood drained out of this Japanese engineer's face. Like, and I was so embarrassed. I just knew he was like, I really have to talk to this idiot, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. 
Yeah. So the ugly American is yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, you're not going to tell us the name of this grizzled journalist, are you? No, he's passed away. But thanks for oh. listening and all your patience. That was really kind, Dave. Yeah. You know, I had a little epiphany uh, last weekend. <laughs> I was at Northville in uh, Michigan, not far yeah. from where you are, uh, yeah. at a concord that's put on by nothing but teenagers. And let me say that again. Oh, yeah. These guys didn't have a driver's license last year and they're doing a concord and, you know, hats Amazing. off to them They're and they're doing it. And all the judges are kids. And so I'm one of the senior judges uh, there, you know, people old enough to actually hold a job, you know, whatever. I'm talking to Ken Lingenfelter. Mm-hmm. And I am dropping a name here. And so Big I'm, collector. I'm, ha- I'm happy to do it. Yeah. And the Lingefelter name resonates with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, with tuners <gasps> everywhere. Uh, he has um, one of the development Corvettes. It's not a Z06. It's an older car that they use kind of as a mule, I guess. And I said, what kind of horsepower is this pushing out? And I don't remember the exact number, but let's say 750. And I looked at him and he looked at me and he and I are the same age. And I said, you know, it wasn't that long ago when we didn't even dream about 750 <laughs> I know. horsepower. I mean, 750 horsepower was what they, what drag cars would would aspire to have, and that's how far we've come in just a you know short period of time. Yeah. Um, so there's a boomer child story for you. So there we are. That is, but back to this S2000. I don't see these have. I mean, this is where you correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see them having a huge room for like, I mean, they'll grow, they'll appreciate over time, like everything else, but no big jump in S2000s. They made so many of them. They're just kind of cars to enjoy, right? Wrong, wrong, wrong. (laughs) <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. The wrong meter is going off. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Sorry. No, Dave, you call it the stupid meter. No, no, no. I'm just calling it the wrong meter. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, arguably you're the boss of me, so i got to call it the wrong meter. I can't call it the stupid no, meter. No, please. But, call, call it like it is. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think that, you know, that's the same thing that I heard when I was a kid about Mustangs. Oh, they made too many of them. They'll never be collectible. Well, you know, guess what? They're kind of collectible now. Um, I think that a lot of them get used up. I've seen a whole bunch mm. of horrible s 2 thousands as have you uh that were track cars um Mm. that are you know just hanging in there you know much like a miata very similar type of thing in terms of you know the track usage so i think the good ones are going to be very very sought after for a long period of time i think for a lot of people they were you know what am i going to call it a touchstone i guess it was kind of a cool car Uh, production ended maybe a little bit before it should have because i I think they could have sold some more which is smart on honda's part uh so i think that uh, i think these cars have got uh, quite a bit of appreciation. I mean, they're not going to be million dollar cars, but yeah, I think they're going to be uh, they're going to be something people want uh, twenty years from now. Absolutely. I just thought they were a great example of what I call mission drift. And you know, you had the Miata, which um, oh, you jaded automotive journalists. Well, okay, hear me out. That okay. car, right? They knew what they wanted to do. They said, "Look, we're going to make it a, a modern version of a Lotus Elan." And we're going to, we've got to civilize it a little bit, but we're really going to, um, we are going to, com- we are going to not compromise for driving feel, fluidity, all that stuff. So then you get this Honda and you had the Miata out there. Maybe they didn't want to make direct competitor, but it started to drift. The belt line, for example, is really high on these things. Like it's hmm. about at your shoulder. You don't, mm-hmm. you feel like you're very much sitting in it. And you don't get that sort of open air roadster feel. Second thing, it's kind of nice. So I don't know. They put in a power top, added some weight. Mm. So suddenly things like that, some of those creature comforts put the weight on so that that motor, which isn't going to have a lot of torque because it's got to rev like crazy to get 9,000 RPM to get that 240 horsepower. Suddenly it feels a little sluggish, not lively like a Miata does. So pros and cons to everything. But yes, my snobby, Mm, I don't know. That's kind of what where this car left me a little cold. Okay, I guess you're jaded and I'm not. I guess that's a, you know that's a generational thing. You know, we boomers were optimistic. You Gen X people, you know, you've seen it all, you've done it all. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's a, yeah. Fair enough. I get it. Okay, okay. But okay, interesting to know that you say these these will these will be strong for a long time because well, I mean, the one thing they do have is probably the best shifting gearbox ever made. Yeah, uh, you know, smooth as silk has been used way too many times, but this right. thing is definitely silk. Dave, I, uh, you know, I spent enough time with you. I know you don't want to see me anymore, <laughs> but I'm kind of sad I'm not going to uh, Harrisburg with you this weekend. It sounds like I, a lot you know, of fun. It's, it's not a long drive from Ann Arbor. You can be down there tomorrow morning. No problem at all. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm going to look through the lots. Maybe if you can get a bidding paddle, would you bid on stuff for no. me? No, no, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, uh, I'm oh. in the, I'm in the. I've got to sell something to pay for the stuff I just bought phase of, uh, of the year right now. So uh, yeah, Here you I'm are? not going to buy anything. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, let me know what you're selling. Okay. Well, okay. Well, anyway, hey, this is a great conversation. Thanks, Dave. I mean, super interesting. I learned a ton as usual. So many great cars out there. Anything you want to add before we sign off? Yeah, I'm going to tell everybody if you're going to do something with cars this weekend or in the next week, get a kid involved. Uh, you know, bring their parent along so it's not creepy. OK, but, uh, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I was at this Northville Concours. It was so much fun. Everybody there is, you know, I'm not even going to say half my age. They're probably less than a quarter of my age and, and they're running a car show. These are enthusiasts. We need to make more enthusiasts by letting them see our cars. Maybe not driving them, but riding around in them is just fine. I, you know, I, I, if you have that do not touch sign on your car, I'm asking you to rip it up at least for the weekend and open the door and let a kid get in there because that's how other people learn about our hobby and that's how they become enthusiasts. You know, kind of said, it said, said like by somebody who doesn't have any kids. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you know, okay. I've had I've had kids crawl through my car before, <laughs> step on the seats, all that sort of yeah. stuff. You know what? You know what? I had I know how to clean this stuff. It's okay. Yeah, but you don't have your precious car, and your kid dropped his bike on the fender. Yeah, in the garage. Well, yeah, I'm not telling you to t- right. pick, get the car with the you know the kid with the bike. Get him while he's walking around the car show with his dad and his mom or whatever, and say, "Hey, come on, go ahead and have a seat." Well, I would all like right. to ask the audience to please rate and share this podcast. Um, it's taken Dave and I a little bit to get in our groove and I'm really proud of what we do here. I hope you you enjoy it and learn something because I learn something from Dave every time. I think having access is super great. So help us spread the word and get this out there a little bit so we can uh, help people get more out of the classic car hobby. So Dave- Yeah, let's, ha- let's have some fun. Larry, I learn a lot too. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me. I enjoy doing this every time we do it. Yeah, ditto. Well, all right. Have a great day. We'll see you in two weeks. Uh, Thanks for listening to No Reserve.